How does a lock work? A question inspired by my most popular video on my YouTube channel of how to go through a lock. I have gotten many comments now of people saying that it's an awful waste of resources for a single kayak to go through a lock. There seems to be this interpretation that there's an awful lot of resources that go into the use of a lock. People have a misunderstanding of how a lock actually works and how they actually tend to be one of the most efficient uh, structures on the river. These structures were developed early in the 1900s and operate on a very simple principle. Here it is. That's right, turns out locks operate just like a waterfall, just with a little bit more control. So in this video, we'll actually discuss how a lock works and we'll get into why they're actually a very efficient machine to use for navigation on the rivers. So just understand that locks operate on a very simple principle for ease of navigation all over the world. The locks we're gonna discuss are actually on the Mississippi River, but they all share a very similar concept. Okay, so before we can understand how a lock works, let's get familiar with some of the names and terms associated with a lock. So here, I have a cutaway drawing looking on a side view of a lock, okay? So generally on a lock, water is higher on one side than the other. So we'll call this the upper side. Okay, and then the downriver side is generally lower, so we'll call this the lower side, okay? This is generally ground. The ground generally follows a hill kind of down throughout the lock. This here will be the lock chamber, okay? And then on each side of the lock, we have gates. So we have lower gates and upper gates. The upper and lower gates are responsible for keeping the water in and or out of the lock itself. That's a big part of how the system works. So coming out of the upper end of the river, there is actually piping that comes down just usually before the lock gates, but it can be in different areas. And that piping will actually come down and it feeds into the bottom of the lock chamber down on the floor. These pipes are actually controlled by a valve. We'll call this one the fill valve. And then there will be a valve here which would be the empty valve. Generally, when I would come up on the locks, the locks would be on what's called the low side. The low side being the water level on this side. So we'll just uh, pretend that the water is on that level inside the lock. So with the gate shut, the water here, you can assume that the emptying valve is actually open, which is allowing water to transfer through here and up through there. That creates an equilibrium between the water in the lock and the low side of the river. Now you remember I said that locks work on the same principle as a waterfall, right? If we were to just open this gate, water would then pour into the lock, which would fill it up because it would be held off by these gates. We don't want that to happen. That would be an uncontrolled flood into the lock and that can cause damage over time. So instead of just an uncontrolled flow into the lock, Put our gate back up. They instead open the fill valve. Okay, once they open the fill valve, gravity then takes over. The water will flow down the piping and then all the way through and up each of the inlets in the bottom of the lock chamber. So what this will now do is the water up on top, working on the principle of gravity, will then start to flow into the lock chamber. Since this gate is still closed, water will actually be trapped in this chamber and it'll continue to fill until it reaches the same level as the water on the upper side of the gate. So, now we have a lock completely full of water, completely filled by gravity, and only a small valve that is actually used to open there is no pumps involved in this. It is simply the matter of this fill valve being opened up and then the water can freely flow and fill the lock chamber. Once the lock chamber reaches the same height as the water on the upper side of the river, they open the gates and now our tow with our barges can enter the lock at the same height of the river that it came in on. So now the towboat is actually in the lock and it is ready to go down to the lower river. They reshut that gate. They will close this fill valve 
Closing that fill valve now cuts off the water coming from the upper river. They will now open this valve and now the water that is in the lock chamber will free flow back into the lower river. And so now what happens is the entire lock on the same principle as filling the lock empties. Gravity wants to bring the water down to the lower side. So what ends up happening Just as when we started, all this water has now flown out. And now we have water that is equal level, once again, to the river that is on the low end of the lock. Our tow boat is now down here. They will open the lower gates. And the tow boat will now be able to simply exit the lock and head on down river. Once out, they generally close the gates again. And that completes the process. That is, in a nutshell, how the locks work. To go up river, it's basically just reversing the process. So as you can see, the process of a single kayak going through the lock is not really a big drain on resources. There's already people staffing the locks. They're there 24-7. The entirety of the lock system works on the principle of gravity, which is simply water's desire to head downhill, which is essentially what a lock is doing. It's just allowing water to go downhill in a controlled fashion. And the use of the different valves and opening the gates is not that big of a drain on power either. Um, the gates generally run on a hydraulic ram and uh, I believe the valves do too. So, And so to keep the rivers navigable, you can see that this is actually a super efficient design and what's incredible about it is that it was designed in the early 1900s or even before. So that's the basic principle of how a lock works. It's a very efficient design. A lot of resources are not used to allow a solo kayak to go through. Water is already going down river. We are not putting new water into the lock. We are simply using river water. And we are not discharging and wasting water. That water is already heading down river. We are just borrowing it for a few minutes to allow us to use a lock as an elevator to go from a higher point in the river to a lower, lower point in the river. All right, everybody, so that's gonna do it for this one. So I hope that you learned something here. I hope that you understand that using a lock, whether you're a full-blown tow boat, a handful of fishing boats, or a solo kayak is actually not really a drain on resources. The people are already at the lock, they're staffed there, they're permanently on hand there to help with navigation of the river. And the water that we use is actually already water that's in the river and heading down the river. So it's not like we're pumping, you know, clean, fresh water into this, we're just using river water and with the principle of gravity and just a couple of valves and a couple of gates we can create a hydro elevator that will allow for shipping traffic to go up and down the river with minimal resources any questions you have please put them down below I'm happy to try to answer them uh, if you have any other comments go ahead and put them down below interesting to see what you guys think so that's gonna do it for this one we will see you on the next video and we will talk about why we actually use locks so until then take care and we'll see you on the next one